I'm the girl who always falls in love too fast. You know when you meet a guy, whether it's in a bar or on Hinge or through a friend group, and that thought always comes to mind. Maybe he's the one. It took a while, and then I found him. Everything just flowed. The conversation, the chemistry, the connection. It was all there. We saw each other every single day. I finally found someone who understood me. He found all the goofy things I do cute, and he told me how special I was. We started planning our life together. He said he'd never been this way with anyone else before, and he took away all my insecurities. And then, in one moment, he brought them all back. This is a really tough message, but I had to share it. Don't fall in love too fast. Because the truth is, when you fall in love too fast, it's not love. Let me explain. Nothing good in our lives ever comes from falling. They say love is blind because the only time we fall is when we're blinded. When you fall in love too fast, you think you know their dreams, but you just know their plans. You think you know their heart, but you just know their mind. You think you know their past, but you just know parts. Let the right person show you that they're the right person. Don't just give away your trust, let someone earn it. I know what it's like. It feels amazing to fall for someone quickly, that adrenaline rush. But why would you wanna fall for someone that you don't know is going to be there to catch you? We don't just find a huge tree with beautiful fruits and flowers overnight. It takes time. No matter how much you water it, it takes time. No matter how much sunlight you give it, it takes time. No tree overnight has the most beautiful flowers and fruits. And so neither can a relationship. It takes time. Because remember, you can't eat the fruit the same day you plant the seed. And on the flip side, don't make someone fall in love with you if you don't know how to love them. Because guess what? They won't end up questioning you, they'll end up questioning love. And I'm trying to say this for your own benefit. I want you to have incredible, meaningful, purposeful relationships, but I want them to be real. I want them to be genuine. Because being in love isn't a mood, it's a commitment, even after your mood changes and you don't figure that all out in one month. I really hope that this message stuck with you as much as it has stuck with me. Continue watching for this powerful interview that highlights even more on this same topic. You are making choices that are, are repeating, that are helping you to repeat a pattern that is making you unhappy, mm -hmm. that is keeping you stuck. And, and people don't realize that they're doing that.
um, there's a woman in the book who keeps hooking up with the wrong guys, right? Um, and including, by the way, one from the waiting room. I don't mean in the waiting room. It's not that exciting in her <laughs> office. But, but she meets him in the waiting room. And I know because of her pattern that, you know, this is going to be a disaster. And she keeps saying, oh, it's the guys. It's this person. It's that person. And she doesn't realize that these people are so much like the people she grew up around. Um, and I don't mean that we're blaming people's parents because I think that most parents – did their absolute best. You know, most parents really want to be a good parent, but sometimes they didn't know how, or they were very limited, or there was some mental, there were some mental health issues or whatever it might be. And so they couldn't give their kids that, that mirroring experience that, you know, is something that they would want in an adult relationship. And so with her, it takes her so long to realize that when she meets someone who is going to give her what she wants, she's like, oh, I'm not attracted, no chemistry, right? It's almost like, like she doesn't know how to be around someone who will give her what she wants. Mm. And there's a, there's a learning process around, well, wait a minute, just because something feels familiar, um, like the person who disappoints you doesn't mean it's right. You know, that chemistry that she kept feeling was like, oh, you feel familiar, come closer. Yeah. It's like, no, <laughs> the fact that you feel familiar should be a sign. Like, let's try something different. different. Let's go into this place of unfamiliarity and it will be uncomfortable because you don't know the customs in this country. You haven't been to this country before. You're going to have to use your guidebook and, and learn your way around a little bit. But why don't you see what it's like over in that country? Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. What What is your take on the elusive chemistry when people talk about it in their partnerships? And, you know, the way I've always understood it is I've always felt that when you look at chemistry and compatibility, chemistry is something that I can feel multiple times a day with different people. Yep. I can feel it with the barista. I can feel it with my personal trainer. I can feel it with someone I'm just taking the train home with. Like chemistry is something I can feel over and over again. Compatibility is something I can't. It's not as easily replaceable. It took longer to build. And it's something that I have with less people in the world in general. Yep. Uh, and, and so for me, I've, I always look at chemistry as that elusive thing because I hear the same. My friends will come back from dates and be like, Jay, like, but there was no chemistry. And I'm like, okay, wait, so, so tell me about that and how you've tackled helping people understand chemistry and, and filter it better. Yeah, so... This is, I, I'm lo I love that we're having this conversation because this is such an important part of relationship. So many times people will say, you know, they went on a first date with somebody and they're like, yeah, no, I had a really good time, but there was no chemistry. And I said, well, the having the really good time might mean that there's potential for chemistry. Yes. Um, but what they do is because they're on the apps and they say, oh, well, there's like 10,000 other people that I can date. Um, and they just keep recycling and recycling and recycling and they don't give something time or space to grow. Mm -hmm. And chemistry sometimes happens right away and other times it takes time to grow. So um, there are these surveys that were done where, where men and women were, were followed um, for 20 years from the moment that they went on a first date through marriages, divorces, you know, all these things. And what happened was a lot of people have revised their stories depending on what happened later. So the people who um, are happily married, let's say, a lot of them said, you know, well, tell us about the first date. When they're telling it now, they say, oh, yeah, there was instant chemistry. But what they reported at the time was, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll go on a second date. I don't mm. know. There's not a lot here. But it built. And so their story became there was instant chemistry, yeah. right? Now, the people who were divorced, sometimes they would say, oh, I knew I never liked the person <laughs> from the beginning. And yet at the time, they reported, oh, my God, we had this amazing chemistry, right? So it's not very reliable that first time is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, it takes time. So you, you go on a first date or a first meeting with somebody. And, and you say, did you, did you have a good time? Would you like to spend another hour with this person mm. and then see whether something develops? Sometimes it does. A lot of the times it does. A lot of the time it doesn't, but you won't know until you give it some breathing room. Mm. I should say too, that, you know, there's this saying that we marry our unfinished business. Mm. And what I mean by that is that a lot of times, if you haven't worked through some of these um, ways of being in relationship that didn't work very well for you, you seek them out in other people without realizing it. So the person will look very different, let's say from your mom or your dad or whomever. And yet, um, once you get to know that person, you're like, oh God, you know, like, <laughs> oh wait, this, this feels really like, oh, I recognize that. I didn't see that at all. Right. So that's our unfinished business. So you really got to 
work through your stuff so that you can meet the person that you're going to have true authentic chemistry with and not this kind of like chaotic chemistry with. Yeah. Chaotic chemistry is a really nice way to put it because yeah, that's often what it is. It's like everything's chaotic, but we feel chemistry. It's, yeah. you know, it's like- Well, people will say, I have so much chemistry with this person, even though I can't rely on this person, or I'm always nervous. I'm always on edge. I never know where I stand with this yeah. person, but we have so much chemistry. chemistry yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it's just, and it's crazy how, I, I'd love to date back actually, and I'm, I'm doing some research on it right now. I'd love to hear if you already know it some, but I'm, I'm really interested in where that desire for chemistry ever even sourced like where it started, like that want that we all have for wanting to feel chemistry. Like I wonder where it was a movie or, because I remember the first time I wanted a girlfriend was because I watched a movie. Yeah. My favorite character like was attracted to this girl. And I was like, oh, maybe I should have a girlfriend. Like I didn't, you know, I, I was a kid and I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah. But it was just so cleverly planted into my mind that I didn't feel complete without a partner. And, and it's fascinating to me, look at where these things started, because sometimes they're just things that you've heard over and over again in movies or books or well, songs. I, and Yeah. I mean, I think that we, we define chemistry as sort of like this instant magical thing. Mm. Um, and, and chemistry is, is so multifactorial. It's about, you know, what is this energy that goes on between the two of you and, and how are you together in daily life, not yeah. like on the vacation in Tahiti, totally. right? Um, so when people think about spending their lives with somebody, it's about the day-to-day. -day. It's about how do we get through the hard things? Mm. How do we listen to each other? How do we deal with um, the places that we disagree? Mm. How do we deal with the differences between us? Because we think of chemistry as like that overlap. Like we we both love sushi and rollerblading and this movie and that book and, you know, and, and we're vegan and, you know, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, and that's not chemistry. Yeah. Chemistry is how do we inhabit the same space knowing that we're two separate human beings and how do we stay connected even with the space between us? Mm. If you want even more videos just like this one, click on the boxes over here. And if you want to continue seeing these kinds of stories, you can subscribe by clicking the link right here.